Rodney James Alcala murdered at least eight women and sexually assaulted at least two girls across the United States in 1970. He spent nearly three years in prison for child molestation in the early 1970s, but continued to rape and kill when he was free. In 1978, Alcala won a date as a contestant on the TV show The Dating Game. The appearance earned him the nickname The Dating Game Killer. Rodney Alcala was born August 23, 1943, in San Antonio, Texas. Alcala's father abandoned the family when Rodney was eight years old, but it was the only indication of disorder in his childhood. In truth, he was popular in school, with numerous friends and girlfriends. Rodney joined the Army in 1960 at the age of 17 with the goal of becoming a paratrooper, but ended up serving as a clerk for four years. After having a nervous breakdown in 1964, he was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder and dismissed for medical reasons. Following his arrest, he was later diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder with psychopathy, and sexual sadism. Alcala's journey took a gloomy turn in 1968, when he graduated from UCLA with a fine arts degree. That year, he kidnapped, assaulted, and attempted to murder his first known victim, Tali Shapiro, who was eight years old. Tali was walking to school in Hollywood when Rodney encouraged her to get in his car. Fortunately, a neighbor saw the incident and followed Rodney's car to his flat. He saw both of them go in, and he called the police. When the authorities arrived, Rodney politely instructed them to wait while he dressed. By the time they burst down the door, he had escaped via the rear. They discovered the girl lies face down in a big pool of blood on his kitchen floor. When they saw her, they thought she was dead. Thankfully, she wasn't. Alcala managed to flee to New York, where he enrolled in NYU's film school as John Berger. He even got work as a photographer, focusing primarily on young women. In June of 1971, Alcala struck again. He assisted Cornelia Crilly, a flight attendant, who worked for Transworld Airlines, in moving into her Manhattan apartment before brutally murdering and strangling her with her own nylon stockings, leaving her dead. On June 24, 1971, after Crilly's boyfriend had been unable to reach her all day, police found her body inside her second-floor apartment. Her case remained unresolved for over 40 years, until DNA evidence and bite marks connected Alcala to her killing. Despite being on the FBI's most wanted list, Alcala managed to remain undetected in plain sight. He even worked as a summer camp counselor in New Hampshire, until two girls knew him from a wanted poster, which led to his arrest in August. Rodney was charged with assaulting Tali Shapiro after returning to Los Angeles. However, because Tali and her family had relocated to Mexico and refused to return, authorities were compelled to give him a plea deal. Alcala was sentenced to one year to life. He easily misled mental health doctors, convincing them of his rehabilitation, and was discharged in August 1974. Within eight weeks, he breached his parole by providing marijuana to a 13-year-old girl. While she claimed he kidnapped her, he was not prosecuted with the crime. After being released from jail again in 1977, he would murder just straight up another person, Ellen Jane Hoover. Despite witnesses placed him near her flat and the estate, there was insufficient evidence to indict him. Rodney was questioned by the police in her disappearance, but he refused the polygraph. They didn't have a body, so no crime. That's the law. Eleven months later, her bones were found on the grounds of the Rockefeller estate in Westchester County. Alcala found work as a typesetter for the L.A. Times and convinced his parole officer to let him visit family in New York. In the following months, he murdered many women, including 18-year-old Jill Barcombe and nurse Georgia Wickstead, in December. Jill Barcombe was a runaway originally from Brooklyn. She was barely five feet tall and weighed less than 100 pounds when her abductor picked her up on Sunset Boulevard. Her lifeless body showed up on a service road off Mulholland Drive near Marlon Brando's home, in November 1977. Investigators now say that DNA evidence at the scene matches Alcala. In December 1977, Georgia Wickstead, a 27-year-old nurse, was discovered dead in her Malibu apartment. This was just a month after Jill Barcombe's murder 
and a few days after the FBI had questioned Rodney Alcala regarding Ellen Hover's death in New York earlier that year. Wixted, 27, was last seen when she drove another nurse. When she didn't show up for work the next day, Gail and their co-workers reported her missing. Police arrived at Wixted's apartment to find signs of forced entry. Wixted was posed naked on her bedroom floor, strangled with her nylons. She'd been sexually assaulted, and her skull had been bashed in, apparently with a nearby hammer, and her genitals had been mutilated. Prosecutors now say DNA evidence and a handprint found at the scene match Alcala's. Rodney Alcala's crimes seem to have been falling into a pattern, but no one saw it at the time. On September 13, 1978, Alcala debuted as bachelor number one on the dating game. He was introduced as a skydiver and photographer, and he delighted both the host and the audience. Despite being on the FBI's 10 most wanted list, his criminal history was not revealed by the show's producers. Come on, over here. <laughs> the bachelorette, Cheryl Bradshaw, chose him as the winner. But after seeing him backstage, she had a horrible feeling and declined to go on the date. She later stated that he was acting really creepy, which likely saved her life. Yeah, that's your number one. All right. In 1979, Alcala's misdeeds became more serious. He murdered Charlotte Lamb, a 32-year-old legal secretary from Santa Monica, 21-year-old lady in Burbank, and shortly thereafter abducted 12-year-old Robin Samso, who went missing on June 20, 1979. Robin had been at the beach with a friend when Alcala approached them and offered to shoot their photos. When Robin failed to return home that evening, her family reported her missing. Twelve days later, her bones were recovered in the San Gabriel Mountains. Her friend described the man they had seen, and when the sketch was circulated, Alcala's parole officer recognized him right away. When investigators searched Rodney Alcala's mother's house, they found a receipt for a storage locker in Seattle yielded a collection of images and a box of earrings. Robin's mother identified one pair as her daughter's. You were a lot of hell because of that animal. A lot of hell. His trial began in March 1980, and in June, he was sentenced to death for her murder. However, Alcala would be tried many times, with convictions, overturned due to technicalities. Alcala was convicted of Robin's murder and sentenced to death. I meet James Alcala. Guilty of the crime of felony. But the verdict was overturned twice due to procedural errors. During his third trial in 2010, he represented himself in a bizarre performance, questioning witnesses in different voices. This time, Alcala was convicted not only of Robin's murder, but also of the murders of four other women. Jill Parenteau, Charlotte Lamb, Georgia Wixted, and Jill Barcombe. The jury took less than an hour to sentence him to death. Tears flowed throughout a packed Manhattan courtroom. The judge turned away from her microphone and broke into sobs before gathering herself and continuing. Sorry, she said. In 30 years, I've never had a case like this. Despite Alcala's continued appeals, he remains on death row in California. Died July 24, 2021 of natural causes, according to a press release from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. He was 77 years old. Many feel there are further victims whose families are still waiting for closure. To this day, authorities have released images found in Alcala's possession, hoping that someone will recognize a missing loved one. Rodney Alcala is a horrifying illustration of how serial killers can lurk in plain sight, deceiving both their victims and society. His calm demeanor, seductive charm, and deliberate savagery resulted in the murders of many innocent women. Even now, investigators are looking for more victims among the unidentified images discovered in his possession. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more updates and stories. Until next time, stay curious.